Try that again. Hi, thanks for joining us online. We're so grateful for the opportunity to connect with you. Whether you're a regular here at LBCC, a fellow follower of Jesus, or maybe you're just someone who's looking to learn more about Jesus and what Christianity is all about. As a church, our aim is simple. We want to connect you to Jesus, the God who is the source of all life and goodness. And in doing that, we want to connect you to others because community is God's idea and, and it'll help you walk toward, toward Jesus with others. We want to also help you grow. Grow as a whole person, grow in your faith. If you're going to be a Christian, you want to have a dynamic relationship with God and join others in that journey of faith. And finally, we simply want to help you find ways to invest your life, to be part of something bigger than yourself. When you join yourself to Jesus, you're part of the biggest mission that's ever been done on the earth. And you can impact your home, your family, the people you love, the people you work with. You can impact your town and your city. Today, we hope you'll be encouraged by the sermon but here's some information on some upcoming events first. Although the pandemic has limited some of our activities, there are still ways to connect, grow, and invest at Long Branch Covenant Church. We host breakfasts for women and men on the second and fourth Saturday mornings each month. You can sign up at lbcovenant.org slash welcome slash upcoming dash events. Also, check out our life groups, a great way to meet and to get to know us better. Most of them meet on Zoom a couple times a month. And of course, visit our website or call the office at 732-870-2028 to get info or ask for prayer. We'd love to help you in any way we are able. Now, here's today's sermon. And how we can celebrate servanthood in our own lives as well as in the lives of others. Um, we recognize something about these three that were up here, something about the, the way that they serve, their heart to serve, that we want to, and, and we did, and, and the truth is we need to celebrate servanthood. Um, we've been called to serve one another, to serve in our communities, uh, and I'm gonna show you this morning, I believe it's at the core of following Jesus. A part of what I'm saying this morning, or perhaps all of what I'm going to say to you, is in a sense preaching to the choir. Most of you know what I'm talking about here. Uh, you've probably heard me and other people preach on uh, being servants or the call to serve and that sort of thing. But you know, it's always good to be reminded of what you already know, and it's good to be reminded of why you do what you do. Because sometimes you can do something often enough and it becomes just a habit or a tradition and you forget what's at the core of it. This morning we sang a very basic song about he is, that he's hope for the hopeless and all those things. And it's like Kenny said, you'd look at that song initially and say, well, this is to sing for people that don't know Jesus yet and you're telling them all about Jesus. But I think as we sang it this morning, we all know what it's like, even after we've been Christians maybe for quite a number of years, to feel hopeless or to feel weak and to feel in great need. And so as we sang that this morning, we were just reminding ourselves of the resource we have in Christ. So I want to celebrate his work in our lives today. I want to celebrate and encourage others to embrace his call to invest their lives. So I want to start this morning with Jesus' words to his disciples. Now in Matthew, Matthew uh, uh, 20, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And on the way to Jerusalem, um, uh, James and John's brother approach, approaches Jesus, uh, mother approaches Jesus and says, I have a request of you. And he says, what's your request? He says, well, when you reign in your kingdom, we have one of my sons on your right and one on my on left. And he talks to them about that and that sort of thing. But then it says, um, a few verses later, it says, the other ten became indignant. Now they were like, oh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I don't know if that was it. They're like, hey, who are you? You know. 
So Jesus responds to him and gives him these words, which I, I believe are just such great perspective for us. Jesus says to him, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. It is not this way among you, but whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just as, or as an example, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life for many. Let's pray together. Father, I pray this morning that we could just be reminded uh, and have our minds and hearts illuminated to the call to service, the call to serve one another, to serve our communities, to serve as you served uh, uh, Jesus in giving your life for others. Lord, help us to be reminded, have it stirred up in our hearts, perhaps be called to change some things, Lord, that we might serve in the way you've called us to. In Jesus' name, amen. This, these few verses here, um, three, four verses here, are, are probably one of the best ways to describe what, what some people call the upside-down kingdom of God. In other words, we all think one way, we all think the world works one way, and then God comes in and says, no, it's completely opposite of what you think. I've heard people talk about God's economy. In other words, things that are valuable to you aren't valuable to God. Things that aren't valuable to you are very valuable to God. Have you ever, ever heard on the news or perhaps seen it, uh, an article or read about it somewhere where they have an auction, right? They have an auction and, and, and they auction off uh, Eric Clapton's guitar that he played in Derek and the Dominoes, something like that. They auction it off for $10,000 to a private collector. And you think to yourself, come on. I mean, I might want that guitar, but 10 grand? You think, you think this is another economy than the one I live in. This is another world than what I live in. Or somebody, oh, yeah, Mickey Mantle, Rookie card, $45,000 or $400,000 or some ridiculous amount. You hear this and people spend money on stuff that you're like, huh, what? It's, the best is when they, I hear one of these things and it's more than my house when I bought it, right? Of course, there's a lot of things that cost more than my house when I bought it many years ago. But it's a different economy. You realize some people... Spend money on things that you would never dream of because it's just so far out of, out of your way of thinking. And it's, it's so different that this is, that's what we need to see about God's economy. God's economy works different than that. Um, he tells us that if you want to be greatest, be everybody's slave. You know, If you want to have power, serve everybody. And it's just upside down. So I, I want us to think about this this morning. I think about celebrating servanthood and I give you just a, a number of ideas and thoughts that will cause you to make sure, maybe adjust your perspective, maybe readjust your perspective and get it to where it should be. So the, the simplest way to say it is that you and I need to learn to serve like Jesus. See, Jesus served, and like he said, he said, here, the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. It, it's the perfect example of this upside-down kingdom of different values. But we also find in Jesus that he didn't serve only for di because of different values. He had different motives, too. He, he came to seek and save that which was lost. He didn't come to get ahead, to finally get his due. He came to give his life as a ransom for many. He taught us that, the, that true greatness is not to be served, but to serve. And that to become greatest, the greatest, we should be the servant of all. He was aimed at different results. Yes, he did what he did on earth, but he did it for an eternal outcome. What he did here on earth not only changed all of eternity for history, it changed eternity for you and I. 
those of us who call upon the name of the Lord, have a different outcome for our lives because of what Jesus did here. What he went through, he went through for our eternal benefit. And it's, it's really a, a hard issue, too. Jesus had the heart of a servant. Uh, and when we look at our service, it should go to our hearts. It should go to our very character. So let me look at a couple of, um, I don't know, characteristics of serving like Jesus. Okay? The, first, the first is you, you and I have to serve with humility. Paul said it this way, do nothing from selfishness nor empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely, oops, do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. You know? Serving like Jesus all starts with having a humble heart, having a heart that says, it's not about me, it's about others. It's not about what I'm going to get out of it. It's how I can look out for others' well-being. It's not that you shouldn't look out for your own well-being. It's that you should also be deliberately looking out for the well-being of others. You know, when you're humble, you, you stop looking at yourself, and you do look at others. And humility comes first by looking at the Lord. Jesus said this in Matthew 11, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. How often do we find ourselves worrying about whether people are looking out for us, whether we're getting our due and that sort of thing. We, we struggle with these kind of things. We, we think, oh, I got to do this to get ahead. I got to do this to get ahead. And Jesus says, no, just get into the yoke with me and I'll teach you humility, and you'll find rest for your souls. You know? A lot of times people don't want to serve because they think, well, I could be doing something for myself. I could be getting ahead and not getting underneath there. You know? We shouldn't be striving for greatness. We should be striving to be the servant of all, which is the pathway to greatness. Like I said, it's easy to be concerned for your own well-being, and you should. But, you know, the world we live in, we're always tempted to make sure we're getting our due, our recognition. Did you notice not just the three people we honored today, but everybody we've honored since we started doing this month to month or every month or so, um, none of these are people who, who kind of had an attitude, well, it's about time I'm being recognized for all that I do. If a person had that attitude, we wouldn't have them up here because that's not serving like Jesus for the due that you'll get from others. You know? In fact, if you notice, some, all of them have been at least a little embarrassed and some of them have been very embarrassed. They, they don't want the spotlight because they want to just serve and serve with humility. They have that heart of service. And it's not just in your heart, or it is in your heart, and out of your heart is another characteristic that flows out of that, and that is that you learn to serve freely. Um, it says this in uh, Galatians. I, I referred to this a couple of weeks ago when I was talking about that, what real freedom is. For you have been called to freedom, brethren, only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the, for the flesh, but through love serve one another. You see, freedom gives you the opportunity to serve yourself or the freedom to take the opportunity to serve someone else. You know, to just stop and say, who can I help today? Who can I bless today? Who can I uh, uh, support and encourage today? Jesus said it to his disciples. He said, freely you've received, freely give. Freedom is part of knowing who you are in Christ, and it frees you to serve as he did. Um, we, we call some offerings a free will offering. The Bible had them in the Old Testament. They had different kinds of offerings. They had a free will offering. You know what that means? You give it freely. 
Nobody's making you do it. You give it freely. And giving from the heart is what Jesus did. You know? Jesus, let me show you how free Jesus was. He says, for this reason the Father loves me because I laid down my life so that I may take it up again. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down of my own initiative. Jesus was free to not lay his life down. Some people say, oh, how could that be? He had a free will, and he chose to lay his life down. No one took his life, he gave his life for our ransom, to save us from the prison that we are in, from the many millions of people, you know. Now, to to take initiative doesn't mean you can't be asked or made aware of something. You don't have to just find it on your own. But when you see a need, when somebody says, hey, We need help with something of your own freedom to give yourself. Yes, I want to help with that. I want to give of myself for that. And just as a side, let me me make a little distinction between serving and volunteering, okay? The best way I can say it is this. The heart of a servant will will always cause that servant to volunteer to help. But volunteers don't always serve from the heart. You know, there's people that volunteer to do stuff for ulterior motives, but God calls us to serve freely, to give of ourselves freely from that humble heart. He also tells us that we should serve by grace. Grace is what enables you to serve. It says in in, um, uh, 1 Peter, As each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Whoever speaks is to do so as uh, is is to do so as one who is speaking the utterances of God. Whoever serves is to do so as one is serving by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. From personal experience, I can tell you, I have served times at times from the wrong motive. I served because I thought it was my duty. I served because I thought it would get me noticed. I served because uh, I, I, I was, you know, trying to be something that I thought I could be. I had an image of myself. But you know, every time I served that way, I ran out of steam. I do it, I realize I'm doing it in my own strength. And I just run out of steam doing it. Because we should be serving by the grace of God, by the strength that God gives us. We shouldn't be trying to do it in our own strength. We're supposed to take the gifts, the talents, the abilities that have been given to us by God, and by faith employ them, that is, put them to use, for the betterment of others, whether it's the church, your family, the community. We want to serve by grace and grace alone. And then ultimately, excuse me, ultimately we have to realize that when we serve, ultimately we serve God. Now that sounds, you're like, duh, Tony, right? Okay, we serve God. But oftentimes, oftentimes we we can't see the forest for the trees is the expression. We get involved in something, and all we see are the people we're working with. And you know, sometimes those people, sometimes those people really appreciate what you're doing for them. And sometimes they don't. Of course, you've never experienced that. It's only only me there. But you know, you, you could be serving and trying to serve from a heart filled with grace, but at some point, if you take your eyes off the fact that you're serving God, you can start feeling unappreciated and unnoticed and that sort of thing, and even perhaps being taken advantage of. And they, both of those things might be true, you know. And you might need to speak up. 
perhaps you should reevaluate what you're doing. But what the scripture teaches us is that ultimately and always we should serve him and not people. So when you serve people, it's an offering to the Lord. Yes, you're serving them, you're all involved with them, you talk with them. I mean, I'm so proud of Long Branch Covenant Church because of the servants that you all are. Um, I don't know if you happen to look out the back doors when you came in this morning, but there's almost no tree left out there. I mean, there's still a good amount of wood, but I'm telling you, it just keeps getting smaller and smaller. And that's because there's a group of guys that uh, of all of their own accord said, let's do this so the church doesn't have to spend thousands of dollars to do it. And they're out there in that heat and that, and they're doing it willingly. And they're not saying, hey, how come nobody's, you know, doing this for us? They're doing it of their own accord because they're doing it unto the Lord. So I notice, you may notice, but really the person who notices is God himself. We should always serve him, not people. Paul told the Colossians, whatever you do, do your work heartily, as for the Lord rather than for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the word of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. We got to burn that into our brains, that, that last verse there. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. You know? Now, if you feel unappreciated, maybe you need to speak up sometime. But ultimately, you always have to do that. Oftentimes, what happens is people serve. They don't feel appreciated in what they're doing. And they said, oh, it's just a big waste. And this, this applies to giving. This applies to any way you give of yourself for the kingdom of heaven. You think, oh, I don't like the way they're using the money. I don't, like, I don't trust them with the money. Okay, trust the Lord. You know? You're called to give. You're called to give of yourself and serve. You do it unto the Lord. Paul wrote in Ephesians to slaves, people who, were, who had no choice of what they had to do. Right? They're slaves. Be obedient to those who are your masters according to flesh with fear and trembling in the sincerity of your heart as to Christ, not by way of eye service as men pleasers, but as slaves to Christ doing the will of God from the heart. With good will, render service as to the Lord, not to men. Knowing whatever good thing each one does, this he will receive back from the Lord, whether slave or free. You know, we, we forget sometimes that God's eye is upon us. And we get all worked up or we get feeling unappreciated or whatever, and we forget that no, we're serving the Lord. His eye is upon us. And maybe we just need to stop and say, Lord, if you want me to do this, I'm going to do it for you. Nobody else needs to do it because I know your reward is the greatest reward. So we want to serve God. Ultimately, we want to serve for God's glory. Um, we can never lose sight that the way we live in our service, where we work, where we you know, in the community, whatever, in the church, is all as a representative of the Lord. Jesus said it very straightforward. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You and I need to celebrate servanthood. We've, we've learned to serve. We're a church that serves. Again, I don't know how many people were here yesterday working out there, but it, you, you didn't hear an announcement about it. I mean, some of you may have called other people, but it was just done because this is what we do. We serve together. We serve God together. And we want to celebrate that. Celebrate it in your own life. Be glad that God gives you opportunities to serve. Be glad that, that it, when you realize you want to help people and you want to encourage people and serve them in different ways, be glad that that's in your heart. And when you see others serve, celebrate what they do, like we've done this morning. But it doesn't have to be at a Sunday service, you know? I mean, you ever just get a text out of nowhere from somebody saying, 
Hey, thanks. It means so much, doesn't it? You've served them by encouraging them. We need to be a people not only that serve like Jesus, but we celebrate servanthood. Because Jesus told us that that's God's economy. That's the way his kingdom works. That those of us who want to be great will become the slaves of others. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together. Father, I'm grateful that I get to serve with a congregation, a, a family, spiritual family, Lord, that are servants at heart. Lord, I could probably have spent an hour just listing things people have done for me or, or they've done for others that, that have gone unnoticed, but they were given from the heart, Lord. And I pray that you would encourage each one of us today, Lord, to never grow weary in doing good, but to encourage one another, to stimulate one another to good deeds and service to you, Lord. Lord, I pray that we would be a people that celebrate those who serve, that we would honor those who serve and give them their due to encourage them to continue to serve, Lord, that no one would be discouraged. And God, we pray that that would be something that we would touch other people with and teach them the way to, to serve as we've learned to serve God. And I pray as we enjoy our, our fellowship reception afterward, Lord, that we, we all just, in a sense, bask in the glory of who you've made us to be, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. Thank you, Lord.